Okay, so for today's video, we have a figure I'm super, super excited to review. Uh, the Safari Limited Field Museum, Anata Titan. Um, I can't even wait to just talk about this figure. Pretty much, this is how it went. So, on eBay, you can, like, preset, like, things where, like, say somebody lists a Carnegie Collection, Albertosaurus, I would get a notification that that got listed. And I do that because that's a figure I'm still looking for. But I also just have Safari Limited Dinosaurs as a thing. And whenever I saw this figure get listed, I knew I had to get it. I actually wrote all the stuff pretty much for this video before I even ordered the figure. Because I knew I was going to get it. And then, um, I've changed it a little since I actually got the figure. But most of the stuff stayed the same. Just because I could tell I was really going to enjoy this figure. Um, so let's just get right into it. Um. This video is going to be very similar to like both the Acrocanthosaur reviews, the Carnegie Collection one, and the Terabibitat one. Probably more similar to the Carnegie Collection one though, just because in the Terabibitat one I didn't go over as much about the actual species and I said if you want to learn more about the species just go watch that video. But this one I am going to like in the Carnegie Collection video go actually over the species a good bit. Um, and I'm going to go over like the personal reasons I wanted this figure, information about the animal, and going over the figure itself, and any major inaccuracies or problems I have with the figure. Um, one first very cool thing about this figure, it is one of the Safari Limited Museum figures that's not the Carnegie Collection. So, um, there might be more that I'm not aware of, but these are the only two that I'm aware of. Is obviously the Carnegie Collection, Safari Limited's big line partnered with the Carnegie Collection where they made tons of figures and it was a big success. In fact, some of the figures I'm gonna compare in this video to this figure are from the Carnegie Collection. I, I think it's actually only one, but still. Um, and then the, um, um, the Field Museum line. The Field Museum line is not nearly as big, but it is kind of hard to get, at least for some of the figures. Uh, before th this one got listed, the only one listed was like $40, and that was just a little bit too high for me. But this one ended up being listed for a very good price. Uh, so, like I was saying, uh, kind of lost track for a second. But the the Field Museum line only has four figures. There's two variants of Sue, and if you don't know what Sue is, Sue is this T-Rex, one of the best T-Rex skeletons ever. I think one of the biggest two, one of the most complete I know it has a little bit of controversy, like the land it was found on and stuff. It's pretty interesting. It's got like a whole documentary about it. Um, and so they made two variants of Sue. There's a Torvosaurus figure. This figure, which is an Ad Titan, and even a Safari Limited tube. The tube is kind of just a mix mash of like their Carnivorous Dinosaur tube and their Dinos tube. Um, and some are like minis of the Carnegie Collection figures. And then some are just random minis, like ones that they've just not made miniature figures of. But... If, I definitely like the tube figures. I'll say that I have most. Of the, I think I have all the dinosaur tube figures right now, at least. Um, and I wanted to get this figure for a couple of reasons. One, I went to the field museum when I was really little. Um, I still remember seeing Sue, and that Sue's actual head was in a case because it was too heavy to put on the actual like skeleton mount. So I, I would like to complete the set, or at least get as many as I can. And I want to learn a little bit more about um, Anata Titan and teach about it because it is no longer valid. So this video is kind of a like mini controversial case video um, since I am talking about a no longer valid species and going over why. But this one's not controversial, I don't think at least really since most people accept it that it's no longer valid. Uh, uh, and Anatotitan as well as Anatosaurus and Trachodon are all now considered Edmontosaurus now. And considering this figure went with Sue, um, a T-Rex, it is pretty easy to say the species is actually Edmontosaurus anectans, which actually makes this figure more accurate, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and Montosaurus anectans lived with T-Rex, while the other species, Regalus, lived before T-Rex. Um, Regalus is known to have a crest, but because it has not been found on anectans, I would not criticize this figure for if it had the crest or if it didn't have the crest. But if this species was supposed to be regalist, then it would be a critique that it didn't have the crest. So it actually goes well for them that it doesn't have the crest. Uh, and Edmontosaurus is the big hadrosaur that is commonly portrayed as T-Rex's meal. But an, at, but an adult Edmontosaurus was no pushover at around 7 tons and 12 meters. There is some studies that say Edmontosaurus could reach 10 tons and 15 meters, making an adult Edmontosaurus not an easy prey species. 
even if it is just 12 meters, that's still a very hard animal to take down. But if it's 15 meters, that's like sauropod caliber sized dinosaur in its environment. And being one of the largest herbivores in the Hell Creek Formation, it would be a great challenge with its size uh, and powerful tail for any predator, even T-Rex. Making T-Rex probably go for juvenile and monstosaurs and not want to fight adults except in certain situations like if they were like on the brink of death, starving, or if a monstosaurus was the only species available. And maybe there's they hunted in packs, which is possible due to the albertosaurus bone bed, but a claim like that is saying is like saying tigers would hunt together since their relatives' lions do, which just doesn't happen. So, you know, I don't I think there is a little bit of evidence for the potential of T-Rex pack hunting, but I don't think there's enough to be like they definitely pack hunted or whatever. So um, and Edmontosaurus was one of the last dinosaurs and one of the biggest hadrosaurs ever, which was probably a common species that actually lived in herds in Hell Creek. Uh, and this species or is portrayed in many documentaries due to it living alongside T-Rex and unfortunately usually being T-Rex's lunch. In lots of documentaries, uh, all the way from like the first ones like Walking with Dinosaurs where it's actually portrayed as an Titan, all the way up to Prehistoric Planet where it actually is called Edmontosaurus. Uh, and I've kind of got like how Red Raptor Wright feels about um, Ceratosaurus where he's like it's become one of his favorite dinosaurs due to it just getting killed off and looking so bad in like Jurassic Fight Club and even when dinosaurs were in America uh, that it's made me like Edmontosaurus even more and I just want to say a big thank you to Prehistoric Planet for not making Edmontosaurus look like a chump <laughs> because Edmontosaurus I think is definitely a way better dinosaur than most people think from just documentaries especially the older ones. Some of the newer ones have made it look like a better dinosaur. Uh, and this figure has only one problem. Well, kind of two, but really it's only one thing. Uh, and one, we're going to go over, I'll go over my little personal thing with it. And it's that it's kind of small, um, which isn't really that bad of a problem, but one thing that actually doesn't do it very well, it has amazing detail for a figure as small as it is. It's maybe, I don't know actually, that's like maybe like five or six inches. I actually have no idea how big that is. Uh, it's not a very big figure, I'll put it that way. Like this is my hand and I don't have like extremely large hands. So uh, I would say my hands are average to small actually. Probably average, but this figure is pretty small, but for a figure as small as it is, it has amazing detail. Uh, it's even got the little bumps on the back, which is actually accurate. Uh, but the only real inaccuracy is that it lacks hooves or hoof-like structures that have been found to be present on Edmontosaurus's front feet. And it's not really Spar Luminous fault though, since this was found out after the figure was made. And other than that, the figure is great. They have it quadrupedal, which is probably the more common stance, because it probably could be a biped, but it probably mainly was quadrupedal. So I'm definitely glad that they went with this pose. And I honestly, if a species can be quadrupedal, I usually like the figure to be quadrupedal, just because it usually, la it usually there's a way less chance of it falling over. Um. And like I said, the back ridges or the little back spikes are awesome. This is an awesome figure. I'll kind of just like move it around for a little bit just so y'all can see some of the details on it. I love the little red stripes and stuff. Such an awesome figure. Um, and now I'm going to go over some figure comparisons. So we're going to go first with some old looking Edmontosaur figures. The Groovy Tube Books Edmontosaurus. And also, this will be a better size comparison part because if you have any of these figures, you'll be able to clearly see how big this figure is. So these are some older, way less, you know, way less accurate Edmontosaurs made by Groovy Tube Books. Uh, now we're just going to show some of a, a more accurate Edmontosaurus beside it, the Walking with Dinosaurs 3D movie Edmontosaurus. But this figure, you honestly can't even tell if it's got the hoof-like structures. I don't believe it does, but you can't really tell. I don't think, actually. I think you can almost see, like, fingers. It's not going to focus, though, but 
you can almost see like the three finger structure looking things on the front. Now we're just gonna show off next to some baby hadrosaurs. Um, here's the Safari Limited baby Parasaurolophus. And then we've got the Safari Limited baby Hippacrosaurus. And I think this shows, these figures are just too big to portray as babies next to that one. Um, and then we've got some members of its formation being Hell Creek. Uh, we've got a Pachycephalosaurus. This is from the Safari Limited tube. Uh, it's probably honestly too big to even be a Pachycephalosaurus. I mean, unless you're saying this is a juvenile Edmontosaurus. And also, if I didn't mention, these two are from Safari Limited, the Para and the Pachycephalosaurus. And this one is from the Walking with Dinosaurs 3D movie, like mini blind bags. And then we've got it next to T-Rex. Um, this T-Rex is probably too big. Yeah, it is definitely too big for this to be an adult Edmontosaurus. So, that won't work. <laughs> At least, I mean, I'm sure I've got a figure that would fit it more better. Or, not more better, but better. And here it is next to the Carnegie Collection, Safari Limited Triceratops. And if you wanted to say that this was a juvenile Edmontosaurus, I think it would actually work pretty well for this one. But... That's the only thing, the only gripe I really have with it, because, I mean, you can't really fault them for the feet thing, but I wish it was a little bigger, but that's how the whole film museum line is. And obviously, it's kind of good and kind of bad. And actually, that does work out really well, though, because the other film museum figures actually scale, like, perfectly to each other, so I just need to get them, and then I'll be good. That just gives me another reason to try to hunt down those three. Um, I especially want to get one of the variants of Sue, and I want to get the Torbosaurus. And overall, I think this is a great figure and was super glad to see it for a good price on eBay. I would definitely re recommend picking it up. Um, I will try to put the listing in the description, but I might forget. But if not, um, the listing, it's like listed at around like $12 and $5 shipping. But if you just add it to your watch list, I think he'll, the seller will put it down. Uh, you, or you can like do the make an offer thing because... Whenever I put it as added to my watch list, they gave me an offer for lower, and it said that offer had also been offered to other sellers. So I think if you put this item in your watch list, they'll probably give you a better offer if you wait a little bit, or you can just ask for a better offer. I was able to get the figure for right around like thirteen or fourteen dollars, so I definitely think it was well worth it. Uh, so I would 100% recommend picking this figure up. And I will go over this little thing, these little booklets. Uh, this is all it says. On May 17, 2000, the Field Museum unveiled Sue, the largest, most complete, and the best preserved Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil yet discovered. And then it says, Anita Titan was a duck-billed herbivore with long, powerful back legs, three hook-like hook toes, and small front limbs. Anata Titan lived during the late Cretaceous period and could grow up to 42 feet 13 meters long and weigh almost 6 tons, 5 metric tons. So, and here's the little thing with Sue, and there's that if you just want to read it for yourself. They actually have a kind of a bigger estimate than I said. They put 13 meters. I said 12 meters up to 15, though, so that's right in that range. Uh, and one thing, this is kind of not about this figure, actually, but... Um, that Apex video, the voting has concluded. There was a tie between Acro and Jiga, but just because I've done some like Acro videos on the channel, I decided to do Acro Canthosaurus. So that video, I hope, is the next video. This video just kind of, I was like, if the figure comes before, I'll do this. But if not, then I'll just do the Apex review. So since this figure came before, that's the reason why this video came up before that Apex video. But that Apex video, I'm working on it probably right now. Um, by the time this video gets uploaded, I'll probably have most of the Apex stuff ready or done. Uh, and one other thing, I did recently order a Carnegie Collection lot. Um, it was on eBay on auction, um, and it was really cheap, and I was like, should I buy it? Because the thing is, it has most of the figures in it I already have, but one of the figures in it is like a brand new version of a figure I already have that's not in, best, in the best condition. I was like, okay, I'm going to get it pretty much just to get a better condition version of this figure. Plus, it had... One or two of a figure that I didn't have, but it was the same figure, so I don't remember if it was one or two of it, but that'll be coming on the channel soon. And my Carnegie Collection lots have actually done pretty well on the channel. The ones, one of my more popular videos, the one of the Carnegie Collection and Geo World lot did pretty well, and then the um, original video, like my channel introduction video, actually did pretty good. So thank you all so much for watching, and 
I would definitely recommend picking this figure up. I'll now I'll do this really quick, just show off some of like the just so anybody can see any of the features. Here it is from above, and here it is from below. It's even got like the the stuff down there. Um, <laughs> Field Muse and this is what it says on the bottom. Field Museum and Titan, 2004 Safari Limited, Miami, Florida, made in China. So that's it for the Safari Limited and Nata Titan. And I will definitely try to put this figure, this the listing, um, on e eBay. So I would definitely recommend trying to get this figure if you want it because I think this is a very good price for this figure. And I think I am out.